<laughs> My friends, it's time to rise and shine. I'm in a Walmart parking lot as it will become probably pretty natural over this trip <laughs> if there isn't nice camping spots. It's very easy to pull into a Walmart and sleep and hopefully not get bugged by anyone. I sleep the best when I'm not thinking about what I have to say the next morning when I start the vlog. This was the first night with my new window shades up. I don't know if they really did anything. It, uh, it's 30 degrees outside right now and it's 40 degrees inside the van. Before I went to bed last night, I turned the heater on in the van. I blasted all as much hot air as I could back here. I turned on my electric blanket as well, and it was way too hot. <laughs> I, got, I got this thing up to 75 degrees on the inside, and then you're just sitting in bed like, oh, this is too much, as inevitably the temperature just drops and drops and drops and drops. So here's the data I was looking for. The electric blanket sucked about half of the battery down last night, which isn't crazy, it isn't terrible, but I don't think I had it on the entire night. It's kind of a blur when I left it on, turned it on, turned it off, and that kind of stuff. So, oh, this cold weather stuff is still... I survived, I wasn't cold last night, but it's always in my head. Today's sleep, eh, decent for sleeping in the van. It's only gonna get better, I'm only gonna improve. Holy crap, it was dry last night. My lips and my mouth and everything are so dry. One of the really cool features inside the Whoop app is the sleep coach. I hop in here and I check out very often what my sleep need is. So in a perfect world, if I got eight hours and 45 minutes of sleep, that would do me right. But if I just wanna get by, I, can, I need to spend six hours and 40 minutes in bed. That won't translate into eight hours and 45 minutes of sleep if, you, if you're doing the math, but it's, it's how you can get by. It's the minimum viable sleep. If you get less than that, you're really gonna start hurting yourself. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, if I want to peak tomorrow, then you gotta spend nine hours and 31 minutes in bed because that will actually translate into eight hours and 45 minutes of sleep because of all the tossing and turning, because of how long it takes you to get to sleep. The whoop strap knows a lot of my patterns of how many times I wake up during the night and that I need to spend nine hours and 31 minutes in bed if I'm actually gonna achieve eight hours and 45 minutes of sleep. If you wanna get serious about your fitness this year, if you wanna become a better athlete, Check out the Whoop Strap. It's a real time, 24 seven heart rate monitor. Sleep is the foundation of all of this and it really helps you track that sleep. If you use the code BKXC at whoop.com, you will save 15% on your subscription. Did I say I was in Utah yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm in Utah. They call it the Beehive State. And of course we can't talk about Utah without talking about the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints also known as the Mormons, 62% of people in Utah identify as Mormon. I've had the pleasure of knowing so many Mormon people in my life, and I have nothing but good things to say. They're community-minded, they're family-minded, they're usually business people, so they're starting up businesses, taking huge risks, creating jobs for the community. It, 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 pains me that the Mormons are such a butt of every joke for everyone and uh, I hate it because I have had nothing but good experiences with them. I was reading up on some Mormon history last night, all stuff that it was new to me. They started up in New York, they moved out to Missouri because they believed that's where the second coming of Jesus Christ was going to happen. He was going to return to earth in Northwest Missouri and uh, they just flocked to this town and the original settlers were like, what is going on? <laughs> Who are all these people? And they got into huge clashes. And I think it always boils down to economics when stuff like this happens. It, you know, according to Wikipedia, the Mormons were so tight knit, they were able to dominate the economy. So you open up, you open up a new Mormon butcher shop and then the two other butcher shops go out of business because they can provide a better service at better prices. And uh, the, uh, once people start losing their jobs, they start looking for a scapegoat and uh, the Mormons were the scapegoat for sure. So eventually all this boils over like really crazy and people die and there's fights and they call it the Mormon war. And the governor of Missouri is like, get out. He basically kicked the Mormons out of Missouri. So they settled in Illinois. They kind of got the same thing going. 
The people of Illinois were none too pleased either, so they kicked them out of Illinois, and they were like, okay, we just gotta start heading west. And they made it to Salt Lake City, Utah, around 1847, and it was a hellacious environment and somehow they were able to stick it out and uh, they did it, they survived to this day. And guess what? They're not dumb. They are incredibly conflicted about some of the practices of the church, just like you're incredibly conflicted about your marriage or your job, <laughs> that you just keep your head down and you don't rock the boat and you continue on with the status quo. So before you start making fun of the magic underwear, take a look in the mirror. All right, so today's adventure in the southwest corner of Utah, outside of a hurricane. I'm here with Nathan from right. Bike Sleep Repeat That's on right. YouTube. <laughs> and uh, he's got a pretty good plan for us today. We're gonna take on two chunky, gnar downhills outside of hurricane. Grafton Mesa is up first, and uh, what, do, what do we expect here? It's chunky, chunky downhill. Okay. I think it's stuff that you can handle based <laughs> off what I've seen, but, but it's fun. It's a fun, it's like four miles, five miles of downhill. Sweet. It's chunky. It's a good time. All right. That sounds like a very good day. And uh, we were lucky enough to have Nathan's wife, Mackenzie, shuttle us up. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, Mackenzie. Yep. <laughs> This whole area is a really good winter destination because in the summer it is crazy hot, much like Las Vegas. Not far from Las Vegas, actually. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever worn pants while cycling. <laughs> I've got these Kettle Mountain pants on that are pretty cool so far. I feel like a dork wearing my uh, knee pads on the outside of the pants though. <laughs> it's actually not even that cold. I could be wearing shorts no problem. 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Awkward techie chunk, my style. <laughs> Physical. <laughs> Almost went over. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Whew, take a breath. Get pointed the right direction here. <laughs> Such an awkward entrance. The bad thing is I can't let him get too far ahead because he's gonna give me the lines to actually see where I need to go. The intel is half the battle. Nathan is a middle school Spanish teacher. He did his mission in Mexico. Oh God, <laughs> yeah. More climbing. Okay. <laughs> oh geez. It's pretty uh, steep right there. Okay, yeah, yeah, but it rolls down. It rolls down. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. Ah. <laughs> That's my secret power, is being able to stop when I'm already uh, fully committed. I was on it. Cool. Just had to really connect it. One fluid motion. The Ripmo can handle it. <laughs> it's my limitations, my mental limitations. Always good to defeat a demon like that and put it down on your mental map. So yeah, Nathan did his mission in Mexico and he said it took him about four months to really snap in to the language and learn it and be fluent and be able to hold a conversation. So <laughs> his kids that he teaches get kind of frustrated. Why can't I get this? Why can't I understand them? <laughs> it's gonna take a little while. 
and he was in pure immersion sink or swim just Spanish language constantly so he had an advantage in that way Ooh, nice <laughs> I gotta check that real quick. <laughs> that sounded like my uh, my bash guard got obliterated. No, it's good. Okay. <laughs> it was such a it was a yeah it was a sound that really sounded like the explosion. Yeah, good to go. <laughs> Thank you, MRP bash guard. We've got some kind of nasty spine that we got to get up and over a tree. Oh, I see it. <laughs> nice, dude! <laughs> I got a second try on that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, such a wheel catcher. Yeah, it's a little awkward. Ah, a good attempt. <laughs> I thought you had it. Yeah, I think I just stopped myself just enough. You ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a resounding yes. Foot down. Nice. <laughs> cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet, dude. <laughs> nasty. A good, good kind of nasty. Nathan said he was a majority clipless rider and then he moved here and he switched back to flat pedals because it's just such janky putting your foot down all the time. I, I've been riding clipless forever now and I never feel uncomfortable. I can always get my foot out and uh, I'm one with the bike. I feel more comfortable being one with the bike. But of course I started learning on flats. I did not start with clipless. Oh, I've already started <laughs> totally in the wrong spot. <laughs> Dang it. There we go. Just let the bike absorb it all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I missed it. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Same thing. The sooner you can get back on the pedals after a mistake, the better chance you have of surviving any of this. So I can see why the flats are a good idea. Yeah! Oh, rumbling. So good. Yeah. Well, optional drop. You can roll past it. Okay. Right on the left. Okay. Bonk. Yee hee hee. Whoa. <laughs> Rampage. <laughs> going for it so many cool parts <laughs> that last flowy tough section was really good when you get in the zone yeah. and then some of the chunk was excellent here's the road gap i was gonna do it if i was wearing shorts but you know in pants yeah, it's just prepared you a little bit. it's uh <laughs> it's not not as possible in pants so this is the ghost town of grafton and as the Mormons were starting to settle Utah and, and find their way here, they found some places were a lot more harsh than others. <laughs> All of it was pretty harsh, but there was a small settlement in Grafton, maybe 150 people. 
floods destroyed the place. Navajo, Native Americans came and attacked them and killed people. So they didn't last long out here. They kind of had to uproot and leave and go further inland, further towards Hurricane and uh, another town called Rockville for protection because it's just so harsh out here. They thought they were gonna be able to raise cotton and other kinds of crops. And then it turned out they had to use all the land possible for food just to survive. So it's 1850 and you're a settler. You aren't going to the store. You're chopping down trees, you're making wood. Maybe you have nails that are from Salt Lake City that you brought with you on the wagon. <laughs> but the bricks and stuff for the big buildings, I'm sure they're quarrying the stone and making bricks out of who knows what. <laughs> Super self-sufficient. Uh, it's very whimsical and very romantic to think about those pioneer days. Always a little bit shorter back in the day too. <laughs> They didn't have as much good uh, nutrition. Okay, so now we're kicking kicking it up a little bit of a notch, right? That's right. So what are we what are we doing? What, what are we looking at here? We're going to ride Flying Monkey right now. Okay. This is a lot chunkier. I mean, it's a lot <laughs> steeper and just as chunky. <laughs> okay. But it's it's a pretty gnarly trail. You definitely probably want to look at a couple spots. And, uh, but it's a good time. It's okay. all fun. Okay. Nothing the Ritmo can't handle. <laughs> be a beast down it. Easy. That thing will do all the work. For yep. <laughs> if I can let it, if I can allow it to do the work. Here we go. It's called Flying Monkey. There is a, uh, there used to be, or maybe there still is, an ejector seat test site <laughs> where they had a rocket sled that would get up to 1800 miles per hour. And they would use uh, chimps to test it out. Woo. So, therefore, they call it flying monkey. Yeah. Oh yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Oh my. The man is made of stronger stuff than I. Tippy toe, tippy toe. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that actually yeah. felt really good. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <So good. laughs> it's really good to be close enough to get the intel and see how he's braking and how he's turning. Gives my mind something to chew on. Okay. Okay. Oh, technical roll. I should have committed. That was not that bad. But I got weirdly out of position. Cool. I still feel good. Confidence is still good. Oh, dang it. I didn't see it. Okay. I got, this is not that bad. I just didn't, wasn't prepared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tingled the Jubilees. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Go. That was a weird roll. I had to just let it go. That was a full commit, which I got through it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jake. <laughs> Hands need to break yeah, the definitely. Mm -hmm. That was. <sighs> this is built by Josh Bender, one of the original rampagers. I actually got to ride with Josh and meet him 
in Georgetown, California. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Get stuffed on the easy part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, really good chunk right there. Oh, almost got off one. Oh, as my back brake sings to me. <laughs> You're hurting me, Brian. Oh, oh, so good to reset. Yeah. <laughs> no easy way down. <laughs> oh, I feel pretty good about that. Ever... So right here, this was the old rampage? It's uh, around this corner. Okay, around the bend. Yeah, around that bend. So, the, uh, so they probably started right up on top of there somewhere. Yep. It's crazy how the renegades of anything push anything forward. Yeah. You know, and just like, what? Why would you even try to ride something like that? Yeah. But it actually trickles down to all of us normal people that have great bikes now that can handle uh -huh. insane stuff right. and just the building of the trails and, and everything like, it pushes everyone forward. I'm like, they probably would have died for these bikes <laughs> in the original rampage and they were hitting like 30, 40 foot drops. Exactly. These would be easy. <laughs> and I, uh, and I don't hit those. <laughs> <laughs> So stoked I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> Happy to finish in one piece. Survive. Yes. Ah, oh, what a great showcase of Utah. Man. I hear this is the best Mexican food in town. That's what it's all about, baby. It was the best Mexican food in town. I had the shrimp burrito. What did you have? The carne asada burrito. Carne asada. It was Good a special stuff. for Friday. That's, That's why right. it came with a giant plate of fries. <laughs> no way we were ever going to finish all that. Thank you so much, Nathan. Yes. That was a fantastic day. Anytime. A great way to spend a beautiful winter day. Now I'm just going to keep on moving. And before I forget, my first experience wearing mountain bike pants was pretty good. When I got done with the ride, I could see a bunch of stuff that I must have scraped up against or might have hurt me or gotten me dirty. So having the pants on, not too bad. Wearing the pants with knee pads, eh, it was weird. So maybe next time I'll wear the knee pads under the pants and even that will be weird. So I'm not 100% sold, but they were comfortable. I didn't think about them the whole time. So that's kind of what you want in a pant. All right, I found a really easy way to bag a few more states. So right now I'm in Utah and uh, now I'm riding my bike in Colorado. Now I'm in New Mexico, and uh, now I'm in Arizona. There we go. I've just bagged four states like that. Super easy. I got up real early to get here before there's anyone. <laughs> now I'm gonna get the hell out of here before the crowds start. This is the Four Corners Monument, by the way. And I remember my Uncle Corey telling me about this place when I was a little kid, that you could stand in all four states at once. So finally, a little bucket list item checked off. It's kind of a big nothing, but still pretty cool. Worth the 20 minutes out of the way, or maybe an hour out of the way from my, from my next destination. So I'm on the road. It's gonna be a lot of driving over the next couple days. I'm headed east. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.